Welcome to Quick Shots, a short format traditional archery podcast, where we introduce you to some of the world's most influential traditional archers, and occasionally, some random dudes. I'd like to send a big shout out to our sponsor, Archery Pass. For all your trad archery products, Archery Pass, making archery's past part of your future. ArcheryPass.com. I will record this one. I will record this one this time. Uh, hey, everyone, and welcome back to Quick Shots. I'm your host, Mick Chambers. I've got Fawn Gerard with me today. Oh, my God, I cannot believe that she is here. And uh, Fawn, last time I saw you was at the Trad World, uh, and uh, I was nervous then. I'm nervous now. And uh, it's just so great to see you. You are probably one of the biggest icons in the bare bow community. I would say in Trad Archery, period. Um, I literally, uh, this, this last weekend, you proved it, uh, by shooting a 9.12 average at the classic and finishing first place in the qualifiers. Amazing. It was pretty good. And we were pretty hot for a while and, uh, had a couple of hiccups, but we got it figured out quickly. And then my last round wasn't what I wanted, but Hey, just finished strong. So pretty good. I, it's amazing to me. It's amazing to me. And I, I keep saying this over and over to anyone that will listen to me. Um, anyone can shoot a 10. Anyone can shoot one arrow, get a nine or a 10. Do that over 60 arrows. That That's almost an impossible task. Like it, it literally is. And um, I was talking to Susan, uh, you know, a while ago uh, and she was on the show and she said it is, it's an impossible task, but look at, you're doing it. How? Well, I'm not shooting tens, but <laughs> I'm getting a nine average. I'm, I'm really consistent with my nines. So it's yeah. so, it's so small, like, you know, 18 meters away and it's just a small target and your work ethic's really good. I here's, you know, so again, another, another time that we met was at the Bear Bow Boot Camp, which I want to talk to you yeah. a little bit about that, see whether or not we're doing that again this year or soon. Cause I loved it. I freaking loved it. And I pumped it up. I said, you know, I'm going, this is going to be great. And it was, it was absolutely great. It was a fantastic time. It was in Ohio, which was good for me because I'm in Kansas. So I, I loved it. Um, and you're a great teacher. And uh, yeah, you were a standout. You were a highlight in that, in that bare boat boot camp for sure. And I think you've inspired so many people with your performance this weekend. Or, is it this weekend or was it last weekend? Th- not this last week. It was, it was two weekends, two weekends ago, ago now. Ago. Yeah, two weekends ago. I know, ago. I think it's so long ago now. I know, but it's it's That's so crazy. fresh in everyone's memory. Um, your the reviews, the ratings that are on the uh, the Lancaster site for the women's barebow is just through the roof. I don't know if you've looked at them or, oh, or we kind of rule, you know. I mean, us ladies put on a show. I mean, we 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 take it to the next level. I think. I mean, when we were in that in that auditorium or in that room doing our shoot off, I mean, you could hear a pin drop. It was crazy. But we're not used to shooting with that everybody being so quiet. So it's, it's, it's pretty, it's a good deal. And we like to have, a, we like to have fun. So. Yeah. You, okay. So I'm going to give you a little sneak uh, preview. I've, I've talked to Erin already um, about, <laughs> about her. Performance. And I mean, she literally is like, she's a great person and uh, oh, she's she gives so, yeah, she gives so much credit to you. And she's and and literally I said, are you nervous? Were you nervous up there? She goes, you know what? As soon as Fawn got there, she took the whole crowd with her, right? She got the crowd, <laughs> like she had the crowd on her side. It was electric, you know, and she just did her thing. And then that took pressure off me. Really. Well, I don't know about that. I think the crowd was on Aaron's side. I think they were rooting for that <laughs> underdog. And um, she wasn't as much of an underdog as people thought. So she was, she was shooting lights out. I mean, she just got in her zone and everything fell just perfect for her. So it was awesome. And I'm so proud of her. She did really, really well. She she handled it really well. Yeah, and uh, well, you shouldn't have gave her your lucky charm. So um, just saying. Oh, she told you about that. <laughs> yes, yeah. She's I, when I say she gave you a lot of credit, I mean she gave you a lot of credit uh, for 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 her being up there. And I know, I mean, she shot really well. I want to take you through that a little bit. Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> no, let's let's talk a little bit about. It. Okay. So first okay. end. First end. She shoots a 27, you fire a 28. You come out, no warm up. She's been there for a couple of times. Now. She's been there uh, two times. She shot, you right. know, two ends. She's warm, you're cold. You're coming up on stage. It's weird lighting. There's cameras above, there's cameras below. People are trying to talk to you. 
and you shoot at 28, which is, I mean, it's fantastic. Yeah. How'd you feel about so that? Oh, just did my job, you know, got in there and did my job and it, it worked out well for me. And the 28 came and it was like, yeah, okay, we're in it. We're good. And then they put that microphone in your face. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to, and I think that's what, I think that's what makes it more nerve wracking than anything is them sticking that microphone in your face, you know, and, and you're not, it pulls you out of your game a little bit. So, yeah. and, and so when they do that to you, you know, Aaron, like you said, Aaron was up there. She's already done this. She already answered the question. She got through that round where they had that mic in her face and it's like, holy cow. So, yeah. I'm, so I am looking at that, that you, I, you know, those are her lowest rounds, like that second round, but yeah, then, so yep. then the next one, so yeah, so we'll blame, so we'll blame, we'll blame the microphone. Who was on the microphone this time? Um, John the, Wirt. Wirt was Woo-hoo! there, yeah. So Wirt yes, got to come back. Wirt. Yeah, that was yeah. nice of them to do that, right? It was amazing for him to come back. He um, has been such an inspiration to the Mirabeau community, and he has he was just so big in it when he was at Lancaster, and he continues to be um, even after he's you know no longer with Lancaster, but he still pushes the sport and is still really there to support all of us. So that's really awesome of him. Yeah, good man, John. Um, good family. Hey, so. What did you think of, um, what did you think of Zernzak too? I thought he did a good color commentary. I thought he did really well. Don't you think? So um, while you're standing up there, because everybody was so quiet, that's all I could hear was fawn, fawn. And it was yeah. like, oh, no, shut Matt, up. shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Either everybody else talk or Matt needs to be quiet, but no, he does an amazing job. He, 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 gets his stuff down. He knows about the shooters. He's in our community. So he knows us. It's not like he's one of these guys that's just like, um, okay, so she said that she's did this and this and this, you know? And so he knows who we are. He He's there on the line with us. He feels our, yeah. our um, anxiety. He feels our pain. He, he celebrates with our, our victories. You know, he, he's, he's there. He's our man. So it's pretty cool. Does it, does he know you? Because, um, um the other commentator was like so do you think this is a passing the guard you know with fawn and 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 yeah but did you hear what he said he said fawn's like a h-e double hockey stick oh hell no no. um that would be an obvious there no um no i'm planning on shooting at least um at least for a little while longer so yeah Yeah. oh yeah you have years and years and years and years and years what was i you know the one pardon me (laughs) yeah but I also have a child that's getting into doing his own thing. So, oh, right. you know, we no, might step back and then, and then hit it hard again. So as we get older. Yeah, I know. I know. But and that's a sport that, I mean, archery is a sport for all ages. I mean, all the little ones. So we got kids that were um, three years old that shooting my group all the way up to, you know, we had, I mean, in their eighties. So, I mean, it's awesome it's that inc- you can do that. It's incredible. It's a, it's a beautiful sport. Um, it's one, uh, Susan was saying, you know, I never thought of this, but it's one at the whole family can do on the same line, you know, Absolutely. and it's one of the questions I want to ask you is, do you, do you, do you, um, I don't want to sound, um, so do you think that women should have their own, do you think women should have a separate, um, category of bare bones in archery okay. in general? So <laughs> That's a tough question. I'm sorry. Discussion. We've had this discussion before. Okay. Um, I personally feel that we're on a level playing field. Um, but with the intimidation factor, I feel that we get more women with having our own class. And I would rather grow the sport and have our own class and work with each other and have each other to talk to and feel comfortable around than it always being, oh my gosh, I can't, I can never beat him. I could never beat him because we can. I mean, we've proven it. Oh yeah. Um, oh, yeah. We've proven it time and time again that we can do this, and and it is kind of a level playing field. Yeah, men have more upper body strength and whatnot, but you know, really, if you're accurate and you can hold it where it needs to be, you don't have to pull that, you know, forty pounds or whatever. You can you can do it with twenty three pounds just as easy. You oh, know. Oh, yeah. So. I would argue, I would argue women have a better mental game than all men. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, we can, we can multitask and, you know, I mean, you just heard me yell at my, my child <laughs> before we got on here, but you know, it's one of those things that, you know, we can, 
my son, when he goes to practice, it's mom, 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 mom. So, so my mental is there as well as on my game. And so, and, and that's, you know, it's just a, a, I don't know, it's more of a mom thing or a woman thing or what, but we can multitask a little bit easier. Yeah, so. it, I, I don't know. I mean, God's been good to you guys. You got, you get all the good stuff. You get all the good stuff. Don't I don't know about that. that. We can, we can have an <laughs> argument on that later. <laughs> So, but anyway, I, I just think that, I just think it's a amazing, uh, I think, I think we, we need to pause for a second and take a look at, you know, the accomplishments that everyone, all the women did at the, the classic this year, you guys did such a great job. I mean, it was fantastic. Oh my gosh, yeah, they're, they're stepping up so much. I mean, and, and the younger ones, oh my gosh, the younger kids, the, the collegiate, um, that group, you know, the, the 16, 17, 18 year olds they are killing it, you know, and, and, you know, they need, they need us older guys though, to, you know, give them a little help because some of the colleges, it seems like they're struggling with the single strings, but, yeah. but we're there for them. So, and, and I think they know that, you know, after, especially after this weekend that we're there for them and to help them out at any point whenever they need it. So that's the good thing about Barbo. It's, it's so good. Yeah, so good. The you know, and then last weekend, sorry, last weekend was Vegas. The weekend before that was the classic. Vegas was a good shoot too. You know, we had lots of female uh, uh, archers down there too. Did pretty good. Uh, it's kind of a weird system, I would say, in Vegas. You know, with the flights, and I didn't really understand that whole thing. Have you ever shot that? Um, we shot Vegas once. It. Um, we went out there, and we were thinking it was going to be, oh, this Vegas, it's Vegas, and it was kind of a, oh, it's Vegas. <laughs> So um, <laughs> went out there and we saw Demmer and them. So, I mean, it was, it was fun hanging out with everybody at, you know, the plaza and, and going and shooting in the different rooms and everything. But, but, you know, it's, they have that championship for Barebow that's there, which is great, except for that's Barebow compound. And they have yeah. what, 20 or 30 people in it. Yeah. And then you turn around and you got barebow recurve and we've got over, I think they, did they have over 150, 200 people or something? Those I don't know. I didn't watch much. Uh, but there was a lot of them and it's like, that seems to be, should be kind of switched. I think it should be barebow recurve has that championship in, in the arena and kicking it and, you know, getting a little bit of more money, seeing that we have more participants. No, 100 percent. Yeah. And I think that, you know, we get to get um, sponsors on board, you know, with, with all our, uh, champions like you and and I, I just see that you know like you and Demmer and um and uh and Dwayne I mean you guys are just iconic in the in the industry so when people look for someone I I often ask um people who come on the show you know what's your equipment what have you got right now so very similar to when you're on the podium and that sort of thing at classic because I find that that's very interesting and that's very engaging and I think that's why you know um Wirt started originally doing that um you know in the the, the early days at, at Lancaster because I think it's interesting people want to be you but they don't know how to be you and I know that sounds weird <laughs> don't don't be me. modest do not be modest <laughs> about be this me. do not I went all the way to Barebow boot camp because you were there um <laughs> you know there's there's a reason why, why people want to be around you and be around champions and and this is this is super huge I know I'm going to sound weird. I'm going to sound weird. It's superhuman shooting a nine average over 60 arrows. It is superhuman. That's the next level, that level of dedication. What is the preparation to get to go to the classic for you? How do you prep for that? Well, see, I'm a mom, so, and I work full time. So it's, it's way different for me. Um, I get in there. Um, what my week looks like right now is Sundays. I have the kids. I try to shoot with the kids most times. Um, Monday nights I shoot after work and after class, <laughs> I shoot, um, for about an hour and a half. And then, um, Tuesdays, gymnastics, Wednesdays, meetings, Thursdays, gymnastics, Friday, we go down, <laughs> I'm sorry, Friday, we go down to leagues, um, at archery world where Aaron's at. Um, and we shoot leagues on Friday nights. If we don't make it down to archery world, whatever happens, we typically go out to the club and we shoot out there. And then um, Saturdays is usually a tournament or shooting at our club or um, gymnastics in the morning and then, you know, whatever we do at night. Um, so it's just, it's getting in there and getting settled and, and just doing your game. So, yeah. And, and your, your mother, you're still teaching? 
Yes. <laughs> Seventh oh. grade this year. Woo! Ah. My, my yeah. brother's up at, my brother's up in British Columbia, interior of British Columbia. I don't know if you know where that is. He's up there mm-hmm. on a, on a, a native American or sorry, first nation, on a reservation? Called, first nation reservation. Uh, and yeah. he's teaching up there. Cause he's like, they, he can't, they can't get people up there uh, to no. teach. So he's up there teaching right now. So we just sent them a care package. It didn't have any archery equipment in it, but I'm hoping they get some up there for them to, to train or do something like that. But so seventh grade, is it remote or are you guys back in school? Oh no, we, so where I teach at, we were only out for the first nine weeks. Okay. So when COVID first started, when they shut that everything down that nine weeks that was the only nine weeks that we were out and then we went right back to school so we haven't missed it um I think we missed four total days okay. um and that was from staff being sick and it wasn't even COVID <laughs> so it's one of those things that we we've been back to school and and you know in Ohio where I'm at you know it's it's not ma- mandated to wear masks or anything like that so our kids are learning and they're killing it so That's you know good. That's it's good. good. It is. It's good. They need, they need to be back in school. They need to be with their peers. Yeah. And, and you're, you, so that hasn't interfered with anything with you. COVID hasn't interfered at all with your archery program or your, um, other than missing the classic. So last, last year. Yeah. We missed the classic, which was, yeah. Um, but actually it worked out good because I fell in at the beginning of, or middle of January, I fell and I hurt my shoulder and, um, then the next day I, um, I was working in the shop and I hurt my finger real bad, um, on the lathe. So it was kind of good, but bad. Um, I missed the people because that's my family. Um, but it was good that I had a chance to get healed up and get, you know, get my stuff together. Hey, I want to get to, to your work ethic. Cause how did you, how did you end up being so good? Like, honestly, I don't, I, no modesty involved. How did you end up getting to that level where you're at right now like what what did you do it's what, all you do about that? fun okay. it's about fun it's about having fun and going out and just having fun um seriously um I don't know Diana Smith she is the one that I can honestly say she is the one female that got me into this sport um as far as um traditional archery she needed somebody to shoot at an IBO shoot so that they could have shooter of the year and she set me up and asked me to do it and I said yeah and I never had so much fun in my life and so and I've never put the bow down since and I just continued to to yeah I work on it in the yard in the summer um when we did field I was out there every morning and every afternoon with Ken um Ken works with me all the time Paul Helms he's amazing I, I don't know if he's been on or not, but he is. No, we're, we're I mean, going to get he's, it. He's coming on. I just, it, yeah. Yeah. You, he, okay. He's, Keep going. He's Keep just going. awesome. And he'll, you yeah. know, and me and him, we do, we go back and forth with each other. We work with each other and, and help each other out. So he's, he's really good. Um, you know, I, I really, I mean, I have a coach, a guy that I call my coach. He's at archery world. His name is Rick. He, he just pretty much stands behind me and goes, well, what do you think happened? because nobody's going to be, nobody's going to be on the, on, at the tournament with you. You know, when you're doing 3d, he can't walk the 3d course with me. When I'm doing field, he can't be walking the field course with me. So if I can't figure out what I'm doing, Mm -hmm. there's a problem because it's going to take me five, six targets to figure out what I'm doing. So I've got to be able to figure out what I'm doing. So it's all right, walk yourself back. What did you do? What, what was different during that shot? Why didn't it go where you wanted it to go? are you forcing it? Are you gripping the bow? Are you, you know, think about really reflect on that shot. And I think that's one of the big things is if you really reflect on your previous shot and do a real mental check, that that's what helps make you be a better shooter. That's interesting. Cause you know, if, what about if you get a bad shot, what if it's a really bad shot, do you still reflect well, on it? Well, then you should know, you should know what you, yes, you should reflect on it because you should go, okay, I grip my bow, I flip my hand, I wave to the audience, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so you, I, I didn't, I wasn't set where I needed to be set. You know, you should reflect on that and go, okay, now what do I need to do to, to transform that, form that into a good shot? So every shot should be reflected upon. Yeah. And I like, I like you, you, you gave us a method. No, you told us what you did one time. And I forget when you told us that. My what, pennies. You, your ten, <laughs> pennies. Is that the one you're going to tell us about? So my, my pennies, and I actually just shared this with somebody from, um, out in Iowa, 
Yeah. Um, so it, she wanted to know, how do you stay, you know, in for that many shots? How do you do that? And you pay yourself, mm -hmm. you know, you get paid for going to your job, you get paid for everything else. So you pay yourself. So whether it's pennies or tokens or whatever, you know, you put your pennies, you know, in your pocket. And if you're working on your grip or not gripping, I guess, you know, if you're working on your bow hand, then if you, that was a good solid shot with that particular thing, then you move a penny over and you work on that until you get 28 out of your 30 pennies. And that helps ingrain that into your head. And it makes you also reflect on it because you're going, okay, yes, my bow was pointed in the right position and I did not grip the bow. I get a penny. Okay. Yay, pennies. <laughs> I think and everybody's great. got pennies. I know, pennies are a great idea. And you put one in one pocket, pocket pennies. It's the pocket penny yeah. theory. And uh, I think you were saying to us, every time I touch my ear, I'll put a pocket, I'll put a penny in my ears or a penny in my pocket or something. It's yeah, really good. Well, and it, and it is. If, if I go to my earlobe, you put a penny in your pocket, you know? I mean, if that's what you're working on right there, yeah. then that's what you do. That, and no, it helps so ingrain nice. good habits. So, no, and really it really good. makes you be honest with yourself too, I think. And that's, the, that's another key thing is you have to be honest with yourself. When you're reflecting on your shot, you can't go, well, it went in the 10, it must've been great because everybody has those shots that it was like, holy crap, that should have gone in a two and it ended up in an X. And you're like, I don't know. I ain't got, I got nothing. That should have never went there. I know, I know Dwayne had, you know, one of those that was like, what the hell? Um, I know I had a couple of them. I had two of them today that I was like, I, I have no, I got nothing. I'll tell you, you right know, now, and I, I know what I did wrong, but it still went in the right place. That, that Leo kid, I'm telling you right now, his first shot, when he came out, that was like a surprise to him. He, he, yeah. nailed, he punched out the center. I don't, you probably didn't see it yet, but he punched out the center and I don't think he came to anchor. I think he just was like, that was gone. I was like, yeah, some of the, some of the form that we saw this past week or two weekends ago, some of the form was like, whoo, I hope you guys go back and watch that. <laughs> <laughs> I just, yeah, it's, it's funny. I mean, some people just, you're like, you watch them shoot and you go, ah, he can't be that good or she can't be that good. And then they score really good. And you're like, oh, well, it's bow. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to say. And, and that's the way it is. It comes down to consistency. You can have, you know, not the greatest form, but if you do it consistently and everything is consistent, then, you know, it is. I mean, I, God, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to pick on you, Spanky. Please forgive me. Um, Spanky Brooks. Yeah. Some, sometimes his form is just, oh, my goodness. But. <laughs> He consistently does the same thing over and over and over again. And that's what archery is all about is it's a consistent shot. Everything is consistent over and over again. And it works for him. He has found how it works yeah. and, and it's working. I mean, it, it really does. It works well for him. So let's talk a little bit about, so go back to the classic for just a second. Let's talk a little bit about some of your competitors here. Um, okay. And you, you tell me, um, I'll name a name and you say like or hate. Okay. You don't have to say anything else. All right. No, no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about these people. So, because some people don't know them and you are the ambassador, whether you like it or not, you're the ambassador for barebow in general, but women and women in specific uh, barebow, mm -hmm. you are the, you are the John Demmer of women, right? I mean, or you, or John Demmer is the John Demmer is, is the, the Fawn Fawn Gerard. Fawn Gerard. Yes, that's how it's. <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's exactly right. Um, tell me a little bit about Maggie. Maggie, so um, I've met her a couple times. Um, she seems like an amazing, amazing child. Um, she's sixteen, which is just crazy. Um, she kind of, you know, reminds me a little bit about myself as far as like, you know, she's got other things. She doesn't have other things going on like I do, but it's more like, okay, I want quality versus quantity. Yep. And and if you really work on that quality, um, then you're good. Um, she's, she's just an amazing kid though. She really is. And it, you know, she's, she seems to have a head, good head on her shoulder. Her, her parents are amazing. Yes. Um, I got to meet them for the first time. Um, they're just, they're, they're good people. They're you know, good, they really people. are good. Yeah. Good bearable people. Okay. Um, how about, uh, Aaron, what do you think about Aaron? I mean, she beat you. Oh. So no, we don't she like her. She right? is such like her? a, <laughs> she is so full of energy and just so bubbly and 
just she's a 16 year old giggly girl um (laughs) and i love her to death and she even when she is getting ready to lose her crap she still kind of keeps it together to where it's she just laughs and it's and i and i know that's one of her like mechanisms to get over the anxiety and stuff is her giggling yeah but oh my gosh and and i really think that if if somebody came up and asked her anything she would give them advice you know and or she would go um, I'm not really sure, but this is who you could talk to so that she would, I mean, she would definitely help you out. And, and I'm sure she's, she's one of those kids that, and her family is so wonderful too, but she's one of those kids that, you know, if you needed something, she would give it to you, even if it was her last thing. Yeah. She's I mean, she's good. just, they're raising her right. She is just an amazing little kid. Great. Uh, well, not well, little kid, young lady, young lady, two, two yeah. amazing young athletes. Um, Absolutely. And they're going to, and they're going to be kicking it. I mean, we're, we're older. Our bodies don't, <laughs> our bodies don't react as well. Our eyes don't see as well. Yeah. Um, we, you know, we got, we get the shakes, we get the, you know, and they have that steadiness and, and everything and they, they have it. So, and they don't have as much going on in their lives so that they can devote more time to archery right now, which is awesome. Um, and really, I hope both of them, you know, whether they want to go to college or not, but go to college and, and continue to do this. And, you know, I think a lot of times women in this sport have the excuse of, oh, I'm a mom now, or, oh, you know, I got married. So now I quit. And it's like, hopefully they don't, hopefully they, they bring their family into it and, and, you know, maybe, you know, even have a boyfriend that has, you know, archery tendencies. So don't it's say one boyfriend. of those things that, don't you know, boyfriend. don't say boyfriend. Don't say boyfriend. No, okay. no, I'm, I'm okay. A... Hopefully they stay away from boys until they're 32. Okay. No I boys agree. until you're 32. Um, <laughs> unless they own an archery shop. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Okay. That's fair. Right. They, yeah. <laughs> that's fair. I have two daughters. I, I don't like them dating at all, but they do. And it's just like, oh my God, you could have been so much. There could have been so much. They could have been more into archery. They could have been more, but you know, they found boys and that kind of wrecks them. <laughs> it wrecks all of us. Yeah, more. but but it's one of those things that that's part of life too. And and they have to be able to find that balance. And I mean, that's, I mean, like I said, my husband and he, he's the one that got me into it. And if it wasn't for him, I probably would not shoot because that's what we, when we were dating, that's what we did. I mean, every single weekend we were shooting. We were going to, you know, regular IBO and, and stuff and just shoots around here. And every weekend you could go to two of them back then, back then. Gosh, I sound like I'm really old. I mean, but that was, it was, it was 20, 15, 20 years ago that we were that, you know, well, 15 years ago that we were just hitting the little bodunk shoots that were, you know, around here. And, you know, we spent time together. Um, My son, Tauk, he was, um, what was he? He was three months old, he'd been to like six different states and on three mountains before, you know, by the time he was three months old, because he was traveling with archery, you know, um, he went to, he went to Italy with us, you know, what nine-year-old could say that he went to Italy. I mean, archery does amazing things for people. I mean, it's, it's awesome. No, that's fantastic. Actually, let's talk a little bit about that. What is your schedule now? What, what's the rest of the year look like 2022? I know if you don't have it all baked up, that's fine. Just like, what do you think? Oh, right no, now? I do. Okay, good. good. I, I got to have is- it scheduled because, because Talc's in gymnastics. So it, I got to schedule it around his gymnastics. So um, really this year, um, so I already shot nationals. Um, okay. So nationals was like the second week of January for us. So we went down to Kentucky and shot nationals already. Um, shot well there. Um, then we had Lancaster. Then we'll have um, our OAA state, which is Ohio Archers Association. We'll have their state coming up. And then we have NFAA, which is um, the um, the one that's in Kentucky. So um, NFAA, I think it's a nationals. Yeah. Um, so that'll be in Kentucky. And then um, after that, it is 100%. And I know some people are going to cringe at this, but it's going to be 100% field. Um, so they what have about, world games. Huh? What about 3D? Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, um, so world games is this year. Okay. In the United States, only um, because of COVID and because of some other things that happened, 
um, uh, the United States only has one spot for um, each genre. So there's one male spot, one female spot for bare bow. Um, and I want that spot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, course. and because, I mean, we're in the, we're at the U S I mean, it's in Birmingham, Alabama in July. So I'm hoping to get that spot. I want to make the field team. Um, and then also do field um, when it's in Yankton. Um, so I'd like to make the U S field team for that. Um, it's a lot to do 3D. Now I'll still shoot 3D around here. I'll probably still shoot, you know, I'll probably still go to Trad Worlds depending on when it is um, and what I'm doing. Um, but, you know, if anything, I'll go down there and, and hang out because I love the people. Um, but really, I want to focus on the field this year. Um, it's, I, I just, I feel that it's, I don't know. I feel that it's a lot just because in July, June, we have, um, nationals for gymnastics in florida then we're so may would be um trials in south dakota then june is um florida for gymnastics july would be birmingham alabama august would be um field nationals outdoor field nationals uh -huh. um if i can go because um if it's the first couple of weeks of school, typically they don't say yes. So that would be August. September would be, um, oh, June is also um, field trials or trials for um, the 3D world team is in June. And then, <laughs> and then you have um, in September, then you have 3D world games that are worlds that are over in Italy. And then October is when we have field worlds or field games um, in South Dakota again. Oh, so it's a lot of money. It's a lot of traveling. It's a lot of, it's a lot of time. So it's one of those things that, you know, depending on what you want, you got to pick and choose. And um, Ken seems to think I could possibly do it all. Um, and so we'll, we'll play it by ear and see how it goes for sure. Yeah. You know, but I want to be able to give a hundred percent to whatever I do. I don't want to go, well, you know, uh, you know, no, I get that. No, I get that. I get that. I mean, but we do want, um, uh, being a transplant to the U S we do want our best shooters at, you know, representing our country. Right. Absolutely. And that sounds yeah. like, well, that's what you want to do. You want to represent yeah. your country and who doesn't want to put USA on their shirt and go shoot. Uh -huh. like, right. So, right. I mean, it, it changes you, though, when you put that jersey on, something inside your heart changes because you know that everybody's rooting for you. Everyone's so. on your side. Everyone, yeah. every American. Well, everybody from the U.S. Anyway. Everyone in the U.S. <laughs> everyone else is rooting against you, by the way. So yeah. I, well, but, no, I can't say that. It, they're rooting against whoever you're 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 with. Yeah, yeah so. it's, it's it's amazing. OK, Barebo Boot Camp. That's not going to happen then. You're too busy. Okay, so Bare Bow Boot Camp, um, Dwayne and I have actually talked about this. Um, we are still up in the air. We are planning on buying a whole course of 3D targets from Italy. Yep. Um, big shout out to um, uh, shoot um, Traditional Vision Quest. They um, donated some money to us. Smoky um, um, Deer Lures, Smoky Deer Lures, huge, huge sponsor for the targets. Um, so if you need Deer Lure, Smoky, Smoky Mountain Deer Lures, that's, they're amazing. Um, but we had some sponsors that, that, you know, got us some money and we are going to buy a whole course from Italy. Oh, cool. So that we can have, hopefully have that course one to shoot for the trials, but then also have that course for Team USA to um, to, to practice on so exactly. that we know what we're gonna see. Because when you go over, we, you know, some of our, I mean, we have instinctive shooters, they're gap shooters. Um, my first year doing 3D, I was a gap shooter in, in Barebow and there was two of us. Yeah. Everybody else was stringing. And we walked up there and we're like, oh, we got this, you know, and I flew right over the first target because it was a deer, but it was like knee high deer. It was not one of our deer. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I, so it's one of those things that we want them to be able to see it. We want them to be prepared for it. So boot camp will probably um, 
whether we call it boot camp or not, but um, something will definitely happen. I would because we it. need to be ready. We need to make sure that the competitors that are going are ready and know what they're up against and how to fight for their points, how to conduct themselves and know the game and know the rules. Yeah. Uh, but I will, I will say though, that that intimidated me a little bit last time when you guys, that's the kind of the way you guys had it set up. But the fact is mm-hmm. you can go and just go right. And, and support. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, go, absolutely. Go and, and support and the team. Yeah. And learn. But go and, learn go and learn. Yeah. So, I mean, Barebo boot camp is not just for, um, for team USA either. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, you know, it's for whoever wants to come and learn from some of the top shooters. Um, and, and some of the people that have been there. Um, and then we, we will do a thing that's, you know, Team USA, as far as if you want to learn how world archery does it, if yeah. you want to learn how this happens, you know, if you want to do shoot downs against, you know, Dwayne Martin, you know, or, you know, whoever, you know, yeah. no, it's fun. I yeah. mean, it, it really, it's, it's, it's nerve wracking, but it's fun. So, I mean, to say, hey, I did a head ahead with Dwayne Martin, you know, yeah. But it's one of those things that, you know, you come and you, you, you learn. And, and that's the big thing. It's not really Team USA all oriented. It is, it is come and learn from us. You know, ask us questions. If you have equipment questions, if you have, you know, if you want some pointers, if you, you know, whatever, you know. And I think this year we're going to do it less like we did it last time and more of a, okay, let's shoot and let's, let's do some critiquing. Let's talk about the way I do it. And then we'll, we'll shoot and, you know, maybe give you some pointers and give us some pointers and do, you know, and just have, you know, a big conversation. That sounds so, fantastic. You think in Ohio yeah. again this year? Or? Yeah, it'll be, it'll be at our club again. We have a great facility. We have Beautiful. indoor bathrooms. Um, we have air conditioning if it's, you know, during the heat. Um, we have a kitchen. So it's all set up there. And, you know, we basically, um, Ken is the head, my husband, Ken is the head of archery and conservation there and i'm on the board so it's kind of one of those things that we just got to find a date it's such a beautiful course it, it literally it really is and we had beautiful weather last time um yes. for, the, for the whole That's time amazing. it rained one night and i ended up with uh levi uh coming into my room he was soaking wet from being in the rain but it was just overnight thing and then then it was clear yeah. the next day it was beautiful so it, it all worked out um okay so i've keep, kept you a long time here um I, I oh, do you're wanna, fine Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, I don't like to cut stuff off because uh, you're, <laughs> no, you, you know, you're again, fine. when I get these top, you're like you and you guys are just amazing, right? And I, I, I do have to, you know, I, I do have to say thank you again. I know I keep saying this, but thank you again for taking the time to do this because I want to try and promote uh, Bearboat. I want to promote archery in general, single string, and, and you are like the person that so many people look up to right now. I mean, honestly. It, it, well, it's I, great. I mean, it's, it's a, it's an amazing sport and, and, you know, we're just lucky that we have, you know, the majority and, and it's a, it's a vast majority of people that are willing to help each other. Yeah. They're not going to go, mm, mm-mm, no, <laughs> no. And, and, and I've run into, I mean, I'm not saying that they're all that way. There are a couple, you know, people that can be kind of snooty about things, but, but you know, yeah. the, we wait till outweigh. I, wait till I tell try. Paul you're talking about him like that. Wait till I tell. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but I mean, like seriously, I don't. I don't know. There's not too many of them that wouldn't, you know, stop. You know, if you're in passing and sit and talk to you and say, "Oh yeah, this, that, and the other." I mean, even on the practice bales, you know, I had a gentleman that that asked me. He's like, "Hey," he goes, "I I, I know that you're you're here to practice," and I'm like, "Yeah, not really. Just warming up a little bit, just to get the road, you know." you know, the oh. road rest off me. And, and, uh, he's like, if you could give me a pointer, I'd love it. And, and so I just told him straight out what I had seen already. And he's just like, Oh, <laughs> and, <laughs> I didn't but want that's, that. that's, the, but that's trigger- the coach in me. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go, Hey, you gotta watch this, especially at a tournament because it's like, Oh my gosh, you know, but if you're going to ask me, then I'm going to tell you, you know, and, and I'm, everybody knows me. I'm pretty transparent. You know how I feel when I'm feeling it. (laughs) It's it's one of them things that, you know, we'll help, we'll help anybody, you know, and, and even, you know, like Aaron, my competitor, you know, we, we actually had, I'll, I'll tell you a little, so we were sitting and um, filling out our paperwork for the shoot down. 
and Erin was sitting next to me and I was helping her out and we were, we were getting everything cause she was a little nervous. And so we were getting everything filled out and everything. And she got up and we were talking, you know, about how to calm down and what to do and what's to expect and everything. And a guy behind me, and I have no idea who he was, a guy behind me goes, aren't you shooting against her later? And I said, well, maybe. Yeah. And he goes, you are a horrible competitor. He goes, why are you giving her advice? And I, and it it kind of, it hit me a little wrong because I'm like, wait, what? And so it's one of those things. I'd rather be a good person and a horrible competitor than to be a horror, you know, a horrible person because I'm not helping out my fellow humans. You know, I mean, it's one of those things that I was just like, okay, well, I mean, if you look at it like that, you know, yeah. I mean, I, I wanted to beat her. Yeah. I wanted to beat whoever was up there. You know, it was one of those things I, I, you know, I worked my butt off. I got to that point and I wanted to stay at that point and that's the way it is, but I'm not going to pull somebody else down or not help somebody else up when they need it. It's just not, that's not who I am. Listen, we, we both, we both serve time uh, for our country. Yeah. Um, you know, we know the difference between war and, um, and competition. A war Absolutely. of fighting, fighting against an enemy on, on the battlefield is not the same as competing in archery or anything else. It's a competition. You have to have sportsmanship. There's no sportsmanship on the battlefield, but in competition, we got to get that mindset out of people's heads. That is just absolutely ridiculous. Sportsmanship well, and it's bare bow too. Right? Anything can happen in bare bow. Anything can I mean, happen ask Zernsack. It's bare bow close, you know, I mean, seriously, so I won, it was bare bow close, right? (laughs) I I know it's, it's so fun. I mean, it was so fun watching you guys up there shooting. Um, Let me, let's finish this way. Um, Give us, give us one piece of coaching advice. What would you, what would you say to a new person coming in the sport? Maybe a female, a new female coming in the sport. That's a little bit of an intimidated, maybe. It's all about having fun. It really is. As long as you keep it fun and keep going with the fun part, then you will continue to grow because when you make it not fun to where it's, you know, to where it's not fun anymore to do it, then it becomes a job and nobody's getting paid enough except for like Levi Morgan and them, yeah. you know, in Barebo, nobody's in Barebo is getting paid enough to be able to quit their job and do this full time. So if it's not fun, don't do it. And if you were having fun and you started to not have fun, then find out what's missing. I like that. Yeah, I like that because there don't quit. There, there's just no. something that there's just something that happened, and you you just gotta just gotta get through that that lull. You know, we just all gotta go call me. Call, call me. Call we'll make it fun again. Call Fawn. Call me too. You can, anyone can call me. I, I mean, but I'm not gonna give you advice like Fawn would. But I mean, definitely. <laughs> You know, I, I have no advice to give, but I, I'm, I, at least I know people that can give you advice and find you yeah, are but a it, terrific but it, role model. It really is. It's all about having fun though. And archery should be fun. You know, whether you're on the line and, and, you know, me personally, indoors is one of the most boring things because it's over and over. You're standing on a line, but if you've seen me between the ends and you see me going and getting my arrows and, you know, we're having fun. And we still make it fun. And, and that's what it's about is, you know, camaraderie and fun. Yeah, it's so good. So come out and have fun. <laughs> fun. Come on, have fun. Yeah. What's the name of your club in Ohio again? Clinton County Farmers and Sportsman's Club. It's just a sportsman's club that we shoot at. Yeah. But we shoot, um, as far as an archery club that I'm affiliated with, it's Archery World USA. Very cool. Down and in- then is there anyone else you want to mention? Any other sponsors or any other sort of... Hi, Dwayne. <laughs> Dwayne. Uh, I, I, it's just everybody who's, I mean, there's, there's too long of a list yeah, to, no. uh, you know, it's, it's, it really is. It's too long of a list to be so, I mean, anybody who shoots a single string is, is pretty amazing. Yeah. Thanks again for being on the show. Really appreciate it. Uh, thanks everyone for listening. This has been wonderful. And uh, if you've never met Fawn before, I don't know why not. Uh, she's an amazing person. <laughs> I am so happy to have this interview uh, finally and get get this out. Uh, you're one of my first interviews uh, I ever did on this channel. And now this is this is a great reunion. We got to do this more. Um, thanks Absolutely. very much, everyone. Uh, don't forget to um, 
Archerypass.com is one of our sponsors for the channel. If you're doing the okay. traditional archery, Archery Pass is a really good um, online um, uh, store and, and, and website to go to. You can check them out. Uh, anyway, thanks everyone. And we'll talk to you soon. Uh, stay safe. Be positive, test negative, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.